Hello and welcome to Economic Week Ahead, brought to you by Business Day. My name is Zainab Adirumu, and of course I have here with me... Wasil Ali. All right, we have very interesting data that we're expecting, especially in Nigeria. We have data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics on, you know, select food prices. Yeah. We also have data coming on um, transport from, fare yeah. watch in Nigeria. We're also expecting the interest rate decision from the Monetary, Monetary Policy, Policy Committee, Committee. Yeah. by the Central Bank of Nigeria. And of course, we're also expecting, you know, um, the opening of another auction of bonds, bonds, yes, from yeah. the Debt Management Office. office. So, Wasim, you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, the Debt Management Office and why they're, you know, reopening bonds? Well, um, for some time now, there have, have been the bond reopening, especially um, given the situation of the country. And for Monday today, um, the DMO will be issuing a 150 billion Naira FGN bonds. All right. So um, the last auction in August, the DMO released about 374 billion Naira FGN bonds. And I think this, this bond, if I'm not mistaken, is the lowest um, so far this year. That's been so, you know, auction. Yeah, there have been is. auctions, auctions. I think um, it's just part of the uh, um, of the way the government is trying to, you know, um, meet its obligations, right? So um, the, the the DMO, um, the bonds will be coming out in three tranches: mm -hmm. um, the five-year bond, um, the seven-year seven bond, and, and, and the nine-year nine bond. bond. The five-year is about seventy billion naira. Yeah, seventy billion naira. And then the seven-year and we have nine fifty year, billion naira. Then thirty billion naira. So billion making one fifty billion. All right, naira very quickly, bond. let's move on to select food prices. Yeah, selected. Well, the the like we all know. There has been a situation in the country, um, high inflationary pressures, um, food prices are up. So, but the MBS will be releasing the selected food prices, just like a watch on which particular the staple foods that yeah, which particular staple really food is um, you know driving inflation. For instance, now um, we look at the last the last um, um, reports by. The MBS shows that food inflation has been declining for the past two months now. I think from 39.53 percent in July to 37.52 percent. And it even brought down the headline inflation. As yeah, well. of course, you know, um, um, like food inflation is the major driver of um, headline inflation. So if food inflation is declining, headline inflation will also subside. So um, so far, from the last um, report, we, we we discovered that. The staple that has been driving inflation, uh, food inflation, has been bread, processed food, particularly, because there has been a um, a decline in the prices of, say, gari, say, yam, mm -hmm. potato, and the likes tomato, the likes of that. But if you look at rice, if you look at um, bread, if you look at spaghetti, look at noodles, tea, etc., the prices are still um, elevated. So well, let's look at what the MBS will, will um, report today. I think of the course, report should be yeah, out today. It's going to be out today. We're yeah, also so expecting the transport fare watch, which sort of measures the amount of money. I think I'm, I'm, I'm particularly interested in that report right? because uh, if you look at uh, what has been happening so far, yeah, past between June weeks, and July, there was like a reduction in how much we spent on transportation. Reduction? Yes, according to the data. Oh, okay, according to the data, okay. But in August, I'm expecting that the money would sort of blow out of the roof. Because, because um, there has been a 40% increase mm -hmm. in um, pump prices. And of course, this ha this will, of course, have a spiraling effect on um, food. On So it's, it's the pass-through can't just be um, overlooked. So we should expect that... Um, Analysts are expecting that the transport fare report will see some sort of um, surge in transport fare, especially for intercity and um, uh, intra-city travels. Transportation, yeah. of course, that's, that's um, true. So the National Bureau of Statistics also will be releasing the foreign goods and statistics report. This sort of measures the imports and the exports. Yes, the value Nigeria of import has. and exports. And I'm really hoping that this time around, it would be that exports sort of overshadow you know, um, the value of imports. Zainab, um, there, there has been a trend for the past um, six quarters now, um, consecutive quarters now. Um, Nigeria has been recording a trade deficit. 
um, yes, a positive trade deficit. Of course, that means that we're exporting more than we're importing. That's amazing, actually. But um, something um, um, more, uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to use the word some, somewhat unbalanced, imbalance in, in that report is that what is driving our export is actually our weak currency. Mm. So our currency is weak, so therefore our exports are growing. But, you know, many of the economists I spoke to uh, when I was, um, you know, when I did a story on how Nigeria's trade deficit has been increasing, you know, point, point of the direction that if her naira had been in the value which it was last year mm -hmm. or two years ago, and we are having this kind of trade deficit, then of course we, we, we see that, oh, the economy is booming, things are going on. It means on that well. we're actually productive. And 6.95 trillion naira trade deficit, if you look at it, if you, if you convert it in dollar terms, you know, the, the, the sorry case of our economy, apologies, is that if you want to, you know, know the true value of what we are, you have to convert it when you convert it to dollar, dollar terms, then, then a lot of money anymore you just, just, you just shake that. your head. So it's, I mean, literally, we're actually not as productive as, as we think we are. We have well, those as, trade as, as we should, as we should be, especially given our population. Growth, uh, our population is shooting up and, you know, our, our economy is not meeting up to that expectation. So, yeah, let's let's look forward to that um, so key that on, report yeah, on, on foreign goods and statistics. We also have the Monetary Policy Committee. What everybody has been waiting for. They are going to decide for. the new benchmark <laughs> interest rates yeah, right. for the country. And, you know, this is something that everybody actually looks forward to because it affects everybody. Investors, Banks, everybody. investors. And, you know, there's been this um, expectations. You know, analysts expect that there's... The committee members are going to be at a crossroad because the inflation result has come down a bit, yeah. has decelerated. We now have inflation but then we have control. a hike in fuel prices. So it means that there's going to be a that effect through. on inflation as yeah. well. So, I mean, we can't just jump into reducing the rate. And this, this is what I think anyway. And, and we, can't, we can't jump into reducing and we can't hike it anymore. Hike so it's it like, what exactly are we going to do? For me, I think um, we have um, now got to the limit mm. at which um, the MPC can you know, increase rates, right? Because now inflation uh, has decelerated two consecutive months, first time in about uh, 19 months that that will be happening. So that has been targeted, right? So one of the reasons why the increased benchmark interest Was rate to, to, to combat inflation and to, by some extension, uh, make the Nera system sort of rebound, mm -hmm. right? So what, so far, what has really, really drive down inflation is um, seasonal harvest. harvest not really, not really the monetary policies. Or oh, fiscal policy. So, but I think many analysts are looking forward for a pause in interest rates. So they're, they're basically going to hold the rates. That's where it is at the twenty six point seven five seven five percent. Yes, um, the highest so far in just ever seen um, since Cardoso came into office. He has been aggressively increasing monetary policy. Of course, that is the only th way to um, to kickstart the economy, especially given the um, rising inflation. I mean, when when you compare, you know, Nigeria to other countries, yeah. like the Fed recently um, reduced the rates. The Reserve Bank of South Africa also cut, cut their rates, rates by a quarter they percentage literally points. Waited, you know, there was a trend of inflation actually subside exactly so it was not just two months and then they reduced the rate they watched a little bit mm. before they then cut the rate so i feel like nigeria would also want to you know put yeah, that the trend of watching what exactly is happening before we well jump let's let's just <laughs> anticipate um, what the cbn would have tomorrow because i think that will come up tomorrow and there will be a press briefing tomorrow to give us what the monetary um outlook will look like, we'll look like yeah tomorrow. So, um, you know, see, away from MPC now, I think it's important that we talk about how NERA has been performing mm. so far. Um, I read a report by, uh, by Bloomberg uh, which states that uh, the Nigerian NERA, the, um, about five African currencies have been labeled or have been named as uh, among the top 10 worst Performing, performing currency in the world. And of course, you, 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 this kind of um, story gives you 
some um, it sends a bad wave across I mean investors coming to, into Nigeria, especially now that Nigeria is in dire need of foreign investors. And so if our Naira has been fluctuating, many analysts are, are positing that the Naira would straddle between 1350 1450 by the end of 2025. Uh, Bismarck Ruin said it will be at 1600 by 2026 at parallel market. So if you look at it, I think um, uh, for last Friday, for Friday, mm -hmm. I mean, it closed at about 1541 era. So uh, I think the MPC needs, I mean, the CBN needs to um, really, really do something to stabilize the era. Uh, for, Actually, for many, I, you know, when we when we think about the recent increase of the foreign reserves, yeah, you'd see that okay, there seems to be breathing space for the CBN to actually intervene in the foreign exchange mm. market. But the reserves are not reflecting on business. They reported <laughs> that external reserves is at a twenty-two month high. Yes. But, yes. you know, ordinarily, like you did say, um, the external reserve should give the, uh, what's it called, should give uh, the Naira some sort of firepower. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, Nigeria case has always been different, you know, <laughs> there are things that happen in other climes. When it comes to Nigeria, it always um, have, you know, well, maybe we, let's, just, let's just be op optimistic that things will just, um, you know, get better. So, I think that, that would just be it for today. Uh, for more insight on our stories, please log on to our website at www.businessday.ng and follow us on all our social media platforms at Business Day NG. My name still remains Wasi Ali. And of course, I am Zainab Adirong. Our website at www.businessday.ng.